Okay, so since we started talking about transistors, I've been advertising this, this device as a voltage controlled current source, a perfect voltage controlled current source, because we said that, well, first of all, IC is equal to IS e to the power of VPE over VT. Meaning that if this is my transistor and let's say emitter is connected to ground and base is connected to some battery and then to ground. If I draw a box and I did draw this box before, right? A box around here then I can actually say that this transistor looks like a voltage controlled current source that is basically this current is the collector current of the transistor IC and I know that IC is only dependent on the base emitter voltage right because well VT and IS I'm assuming that they're constants right and I said this is a this is the definition of the voltage controlled current source that this is the definition of the current source most importantly uh, because no matter what I connect here I could connect a, a single resistor to ground or I could connect a huge circuit here right it doesn't matter what do I connect to there because my IC is not going to change because my IC is actually only controlled by this base voltage or to be more accurate by the base emitter voltage VBE right which is something internal to that current source and that was the definition of a current source current source is a is a two element or sorry a two terminal element that uh, its current is not dependent on anything that you connect to it it's always going to have a constant current in the branch that is dependent on well something internal within the current source so that internal thing could be just well a number like an independent current source or it could be, well, dependent on something else, but it's not dependent on what you connect to it, right? Well, turns out that uh, it's not really the full story. So this is actually to the first order or to the zero order, this is correct. But then for some applications, we actually want, and you can imagine as an engineer, nothing is that ideal and that perfect in the world. And this current source is not going to be a perfect current source. It does matter. Uh, if you want to be very precise in, in sub application, you do want to be very precise. Uh, if you want to be precise, it does matter a little bit, let's say, right? That what you connect to this collector of the transistor. And that uh, that is really rooted into something that we're going to call it early effect. Okay, so Mr. Early kind of uh, found this, the, the, the reason behind all these dependencies and that's why it's named after him, okay? So what is early effect if I want to explain it very uh, simply and in a very quick way, because we don't care too much about the physics, it's just that we need to understand where does it come from? Well, first remember this sandwich, right? We had an NPN sandwich of uh, semiconductor material. Uh, we called this one emitter, we called this one base, and we called this one collector, right? And we said that, well, in a normal active biasing condition where the base emitter diode is forward biased and the base collector biased, uh, diode is actually reverse biased, what happens is that I'm going to have a huge flow of electrons from the emitter to the base. The moment they enter the base, uh, at the edge of emitter base, they have the highest concentration. So this, this line, this is slope is really showing the concentration of electrons if you rotate your uh, your your uh, monitor or your head by 90 degrees, you will see that well, this is the highest point and this is the lowest point, right? And I know that I'm going to have a lot of electrons at the at the base emitter junction, and then I'm going to have zero electrons by the time I have re reached the base collector junction because well, that's a depletion region. I shouldn't have any free electrons at uh, after that point. So by that point, I've reached zero. And I have maximum here because, well, all the electrons are actually coming from the emitter side, right? So at the emitter edge here, I have the maximum. At the collector edge, I have the minimum, right? And these electrons are going to basically, due to this slope, I'm going to have diffusion current that is dependent on, the, on this slope. And then basically what happens is that, is that these electrons are going to flow through the base 
a very small percentage of them are going to be recombining with the holes in the base but because base is actually very thin as it is not shown here uh, it's exaggerated bit for the base uh, most of these electrons are going to reach finally eventually they're going to reach to the collector region right and that's what actually resulted in this in, in this expression right what happens in reality is that when I increase the VCE, the collector emitter voltage, let's say that I had a VCE of one volt here, right? And I decided to increase that to two volts, right? What does happen? Well, my base collector voltage was reverse biased initially because my base, let's say, was at 0.7, uh, collector is at one volt, so I have a diode because this is the p-type and this is the n-type. I have a p-n junction here that is reverse biased. The n side is actually connected to a higher voltage, and that's why I had this depletion region that is not that that was actually pretty wide. It wasn't really uh, narrowed down like the emitter base emitter depletion region that was forward biased, right? Now, if I make collector voltage two volts without changing the base voltage, what happens is that well, I'm go I go deeper into the uh, reverse bias. And if you remember from diode discussions that we had, when you uh, further and further reverse bias a, a PN junction, what happens is that the depletion region becomes wider and wider. So how's that going to affect my current? Well, if you think about it, once you actually make the uh, depletion region wider, in a sense, this the, the slope of this line is going to be more steep. Why? Because, well, in a shorter distance, I have to get from the maximum to zero, right? The maximum hasn't changed, but well, and the zero is zero, but then the distance is actually uh, shorter. So I'm talking about this distance from here to here, right? And because of that, I'm gonna have a bigger slope. And because of this bigger slope, I know that uh, the diffusion current in the base is proportional to slope of this line, right? And this line is really showing the distribution of uh, free electrons in the base region. And because of that, you're going to have, if you increase VCE, you're going to have a little bit of a change in the collector current. And that little bit of change is due to something that we just described, and it's called early effect. So the perfect flat line that we had before, which is shown in, in a dashed line kind of a way in this plot, is going to look like this actually, right? So with early effect, you're going to have a little bit of a slope there. The slope is actually quite uh, basically uh, small, but it's not zero. So in reality, we do have a pretty good voltage controlled current source. But it's not that we can actually say this is ideal and whatever you connect to it and whatever the voltage at, at the collector is going to be, I'm going to have the same current. It, the, the voltage at the collector has its, its own F, uh, effect or impact on the collector current. That's, that's the uh, gist of early effect. And we're going to model that and we're going to uh, incorporate that into the equations that we have, uh, we have had calculated up to now. Okay, so it turns out that considering this early effect, um, our transistor's current to voltage, kind of current voltage equation, the exponential equation, is changed to this form, meaning that now we're going to call IC is equal to, well, IS e to the power of VBE over VT. And then up to now, that was it. But now we're going to multiply this by 1 plus VCE over VA. Okay. Now, what is VA? The VA is something that we define as the early voltage. Generally, a large number, a large voltage that is actually given to us. So up to now, we knew that for bipolar transistor, we knew that 
and for any transistor we need to know is we need to know beta now we realize that we need to know va okay so these are the given parameters for any transistor so up to now this va was in an ideal case where we had an ideal current source va was equal to infinity because if you look at this expression if va becomes infinity no matter what is the collector emitter voltage the vce this this bracket is gonna uh well it used to be better than this in doing in drawing these kind of things but anyway this bracket is going to simplify to one and we're going to get our old expression which is the exponential expression that we have right so in an ideal scenario va is infinity in a real scenario va is well less than infinity some finite value okay how how like visually how can we actually imagine this va generally what they do is that sometimes from the this plot you can actually find this va by kind of continuing this line and finding the x-intercept so if this is the x-axis this voltage is negative va right so you can imagine that if you have a flat line well you're not going to have an intercept you're not going to have an x-intercept ever until well you reach negative infinity that's why va becomes infinity right so this small the, the larger va you have the smaller slope you're going to have and the closer to the ideal scenario you're going to get right and you're going to get basically close and the, the smaller slope you have so like basically for this case you have a very large va and you're going to have uh, you're going to basically uh hit the x-axis in a very in a very large negative voltage okay but then well this is an awful transistor for example because it's going to result in a very small va and it means that you have a huge dependency on the collector emitter voltage meaning that uh your current source is not really a current source it's it's almost becoming a resistor kind of a thing because well resistor is the element that we know that its current and voltage are actually linearly dependent on each other so a transistor in the worst case possible scenario becomes a resistor right when the collector and emitter voltage um, has a big say in the current between collector and emitter but in general you want a current source so you want this as flat as possible and the way that we model this is using this expression so based on this expression the bigger the va or the smaller the vce the smaller the impact of the collector emitter voltage on the current okay okay so let's do a quick example to see how this early effect changes the operating point of our transistor so let's say that we have a bipolar transistor that carries a collector current of one milliamp and the collector emitter voltage is actually given to us because we're doing the early effect analysis we need we do care about vce and we want to determine uh, the required base emitter voltage so vpe if the early voltage is actually infinity so meaning no early effect and va is 20 volts okay also is is given to us so um, let's do part a when va is infinity I know that well nothing is actually new here so i know that uh, ic is equal to is e to the power of vpe over vt um, everything is kind of like given so is is known vpe well that's what i want to find vt is given and ic is given so if you do the math you get a vpe equal to 760.3 millivolts okay part b va is equal to 20 volts so ic is going to be now is e to the power of vbe over vt but then i have this one plus vce over va also in my equation again IC is given, IS is given, VT is given, VC and VA are also given. So it's just basically plugging in numbers. So if you do the math, you get VBE is equal to 757.8 millivolts. Okay.
So uh, it's not a surprise because we just looking at the number for VCE and the number for VA, we can see that the ratio is like two over 20. So uh, instead of having one for this bracket, we have one plus two over 20, so 1.1. So that's how much things changed in terms of like IC. And then we know that if my IC is actually changing by 10%, since VBE has a logarithmic relationship with IC, I know that like the change in the VBE is going to be even smaller than that. And you can see that it, it only changed by about three millivolts or even less than that, right? So uh, that's pretty much what I wanted you guys to see that like basically the calculation is going to be, it's just a little bit of more math, but uh, there's nothing new about uh, the way we approach uh, the DC analysis of, of, of transistors with early effect.